Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, I am once again taking a look at one of your designs that you have linked to me in the comment section of one of my videos. So for today's video, we are looking at the Dracona Prima Grada. Hopefully I am saying that correctly, but anyway, it is this thing right here, which is primarily made of glass. Now it gets very confusing on the inside because I don't know what's happened with the graphics in this game, but I sometimes can't tell the difference between a gap and a window. So it'll be interesting to go around. On the workshop page itself, it doesn't really show you much of the ship. So my biggest advice to you, the person who created this, is to upload some screenshots because what it shows on the workshop page, it doesn't show off how well made this ship actually is. But anyway, let's start by going around the outside. At the very front, we can see all the innards. At the very front, we can see through the glass where we have our living quarters. We've got our passenger seats. And if I was to move up a little bit, you could just see where the actual control seat is at the very back there. We've got some lovely steps that go all the way from the ground to the doors of how you get in. Behind, and if I was to say it dropped down there, you can see that they're just off the ground, which is how that one landing gear there is locking you in place. So it is recommended to make sure you always land on a flat surface because you could very easily damage those stairs. Then again, they are very easy to replace. We've got some lights on the side and we've got some little blocks just on the edge there, just to break up that little blandness that these stairs usually have. We can see on the side, and this is the same for both sides, we've got some atmospheric thrusters and some ion thrusters. So we can go both on planets and through space. We do have some solar panels hidden underneath there. Yes, it's quite an odd design to have the solar panels on the bottom of the ship, but it does make sense when you're flying around through space that the sun would sometimes be on the base of the ship, unlike when you're on planets where it'll only hit the top. We can see a spotlight on the top there, but as we come around the side, we can see some lovely block work and some more atmospheric thrusters. We can see catwalks, ion thrusters, and then the oxygen generator, which is sitting right there. Looks very nice. If you didn't really know what they were, it would look like an additional thruster. We can see right underneath these, alternative way of getting in the ship. So this is slightly different because we've got three stairs going up into one, and it just makes it look very pretty. These stairs there are set up in a way that if you were to land on a flat surface, you could unlock the landing gear and just force yourself down until you were completely flat on the ground before locking the landing gear. Going around, we've got some nice lights there, which we can turn on and off. Even more thrusters. And then as we come to the back, we've got some upside down stairs for some nice decorations. We can see a little bit of modules there sticking out, which are purely for decoration, it looks like considering the large iron thrusters are taking up most of the room. And then as we come above, we can see even more glass. We can see the back of the iron thrusters. We can then see some gyroscopes attached to the conveyors. Even more iron thrusters. We can then see the hydrogen engine sitting in the dead center there. Below it, we can see a large reactor. We then have what I believe is a assembler. I can't remember. I always get them mixed up. That should be an assembler. And then as we go further back, or towards the front of the ship even, we can see a remote control block and the ends of the auction tanks. At the very front, we have a jump drive. Turning round and looking behind us, we've got some stairs and we've got some windows just going up to this weird little platform. So at the very top, past the antenna, we've got some lights and some catwalks, which is like a very small ship landing pad, where you just dock it down here and then just walk down into the ship, where we have a conveniently placed door there for you to access the main area. And that is basically it for the outside. It's a very well made ship and it looks absolutely beautiful with the way this person has used all the glass to create that front cockpit. Yes, it doesn't have any guns on it and yes, it would just fall apart as soon as gunfire started going towards its general direction, but it still looks great for an exploration or a little RP type of ship. So now it's time to get control of my character and go up one of these stairs. So we can just hop up this step. Inside, we have a double door for an airlock. There we go. And then we are on the living quarters area using the first DLC for the chairs, the planters and the little blocks there. 
So we've got the little chairs going around the outside. We can sit there and look nice. It's very weird to look down and it's like there's no block there, but you know there is a window. I don't know why the textures are suddenly going so clean. Yes, it looks rather amazing. And then if, we, if I just step back and look like this, there are multiple floors here, but the first I missed them because I couldn't really see them. Kind of funny because I've never really used a glass as a proper interior before. Anyway, going up these stairs here, we get to a air vent. We've got the four cryopods, a table there for you to have your meeting on. And then, going around like this, we can then see the underneath of the jump drive. We have a gravity generator on there, so we don't float away while we're in space. And we have a little cooker sitting right there, so you can cook your food, go and eat it, and then go to sleep in the cryopod. Coming down and around, I know I've got to go to the front of the ship, but that'll come a bit later. We've got some beds. Yes, the DLC beds sit to below where the little table area is. In fact, we can see it right there. And then we have a doorway. Oh, hold on a minute. Like I said, it gets a little confusing after a while with all the glass everywhere. We've got a doorway here which leads to the toilet. Just one single toilet. And on the opposite side, we have the medical bay for you to change your outfit or for a little recharge. Now, this caught me off guard. It's like, why can't I get through here? But there was a window there. Anyway, we can come up that very window and open up this door, which will lead us to the assembler and the outside. So these are the three-way stairs that will take us to the surface. And we can then come down to the opposite side. It's very good, isn't it? Oh, I completely forgot to look underneath. Underneath, we got a large cargo container. We can see what looks like a module. Yes, that's a module. And we've got some batteries that we can see straight underneath the little glass panels. Completely forgot about that. Anyway, back inside, we come through these lovely passages. Through here again, let's just close up those doors. There we go. And then we can turn around and come to the very front. Up this glass, we've got some chairs. So we've got some corner chairs. And we've got a frontal chair for you to look out and gaze upon the moon surface, the Earth-like planet, and the sun. Coming around to here, we've got a, another window which leads us to the next floor up. We've got two chairs on the corner again, and then we've got the main cockpit, which is how we fly it. But I won't just go in there just yet. Going up this window, we can access the jump drive right here, so we can manually control the distance and all that. But then we can come back down through here, and then we have a door. Exactly the same on the opposite side. Then we can come up here. And we're now on the surface where we can run up to this little landing pad. It's good, isn't it? It's a very good ship. Well thought out. Coming down, let's just close that door up, open that one. And now it's time to hop into the cockpit and see what this ship has to offer. So tab number one is all about the lights. So we can turn the lights on and off. So there we go. And we can turn them all on. So we've got control over each individual one. So if you want to just maybe not have that, you can just turn it off. Tab number two is where your like main resource generation, power generation and all that is being handled. So we've got our reactor, we've got a hydrogen engine, we've got the refineries, batteries, solar panels, the O2 generator and the gravity generator. On tab number three, we've got the antenna on and off. We have a remote control block. Yes, if you accidentally get stranded on the surface of the planet while your ship is in the air and you have no jetpack, you can remote control the ship and land it so you can get back onto it. Three and four are for cameras. So number three is for you to look directly forwards. We are sitting just below the camera, below that rim. If I come out of that and go into number four, we can then see directly behind us. On tab number four, we then got manual controls over the thrusters, so if you are on the Earth-like planet, you can turn off the ion thrusters to save power, and if you are in space, you can turn off the atmospheric thrusters. Number three is for the jump drive, and number four is to lock and unlock the landing gear, and number five is to disconnect the connector. So now it's time to test the flight capability of this ship. So, going forwards, we accelerate exceptionally fast thanks to those large iron thrusters at the back there. Stopping on the other hand is pretty slow, although it's not bad for a cruise vessel basically. It's not a combat vessel that needs to turn fast, it can just mosey on down to its low speed, but it is still pretty slow. Going left is very very slow. 
going right, once again, is exceptionally slow. Going backwards... is pretty fast, it seems pretty fast. And going down... It's alright. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it's perfectly usable. Moving my mouse around, it's just right with its sensitivity. It's got enough weight to it, but it's not too floaty that you can just flip yourself over by accidentally touching your mouse. And last but not least, we need to check the block count of this. So if I come over and find it over here, this ship weighs in at 817 large blocks. So it's relatively small for the amount of detail on it. But as for that, that is it for this video. It'll be in the description below if you wish to download and try it yourself. And I'll be back with another showcase video some point soon. Bye bye.